Hi, it's Artie Kavanaugh here at RWCS 2016 Rheumatology Winter Clinical Symposium for Rheumatology Now, Room Now, and looking at some of the posters in the poster area of the meeting and talking with the fellows. A lot of interesting cases. We're going to have one by Dr. Julie Jones from the Franciscan Alliance. going to talk to us about an interesting case involving muscle. Dr. Jones? Hi. So, yeah, this I love this case. It, um, I have a passion for inflammatory um, muscle disease, so when I inherited this case, she had actually a 70-year-old woman who had been uh, having symptoms for about 20-plus years, originally came to the rheumatologist six years ago complaining of some muscle weakness before they could really finish the workup on her. She had a, she had a negative MRI, her just really sort of low, lowly elevated uh, muscle enzymes, but she left, kind of disappeared for six years. Uh, came back to us, and this is where I inherited her worsening weakness, proximal muscle weakness. We started the workup on her, still had mildly elevated CKs, but nothing where we thought this is true polymyositis. Her EMG turned out to be negative. Uh, so I said, you know what, let's go ahead and get the muscle biopsy before we lose her to follow up again. We did, and luckily I was uh, lucky to work with a really astute pathologist who did the initial um, uh, muscle enzymes, uh, muscle biopsy that you see here and saw some inflammation that looked like possibly polymyositis, but he said, you know what, Let's. you want to take this a step further? And I said, sure. Did some additional staining, and that's where we saw these nimelin rods. Uh, only 51 other cases of nimelin rod myopathy really reported in adults. And to our knowledge, this is the first one that appears to be a true overlap of both polymyositis and nimelin rod myopathy. So uh, also center to Mayo, uh, where one of the published... Uh, study years of nimelin rod myopathy in adults still works and so she agreed to see this patient for us and uh, said yeah I think this is a true overlap of actual polymyositis and nimelin rod myositis so why don't we treat her for both. So we are. We started treating her about two weeks ago with uh, IVIG, high dose IV steroids and uh, methotrexate. Uh, nimelin rod doesn't usually respond to steroids but polymyositis does. So luckily she's walking a little better as of today. I just talked to her a couple of days ago. She's able to stand on her own a little bit more. So it's a good case. So it's interesting. I, I think we probably are missing a number of cases of these. And it was, I think in your case shows that if you hadn't been working closely with a pathologist, you would have gotten a rather bland pathology report and missed out on this. Do you think we're missing a, a fair number of these cases? I do think that we're missing some of these, and so it makes me want to, to order some additional studies when I start to get my muscle pathology, because I, I think that we may actually, in some of the ones, we're not quite sure if they're a true polymyositis. If we, if we dig down a little deeper with the pathology, I think we're going to start to see maybe more nimelin rods in the pathology. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones. Very interesting case, and thank you for watching. This is Artie Kavanaugh, RWCS 2016, for Room Now.